Welcome back to the Dancer course. Uh, when I started the course, I saw that I'm going to do everything uh, primarily on Windows, and then uh, and then showed first uh, how to install uh, Perl on Windows and um, how to install Dancer. And then as I made uh, some progress, I think I, after four, four or five videos, I uh, understood that uh, there are some issues on, on Windows, I, and I wasn't sure what uh, are the issues. So I decided that I'm going to show the rest of the uh, slides or rest of the, the videos or at least I'm going to continue now on Linux. Now this video is going to appear as the second video so if you are going in, in uh, uh, progressing one after one then that's going to be probably the second video because in this video I'm going to talk about how to install Perl on Linux, how to make sure that we have the environment on Linux as well and then I'm going to show you uh, how to get started on, on Linux. Uh, in Mac it's probably the same, so it's it is no no big difference uh, because they are both uh, Unix-like operating systems. So that's the, that's quite the same. And um, and the one more thing. To, so the the uh, besides, I think the the fact that on Linux the the reload uh, of um, the plug up reload that uh, on Windows doesn't work or didn't work for me. Uh, be, besides the fact that it works uh, properly on Linux. Um, I don't think that there are, there are going to be any issues, any differences, basically. So if you keep using Windows, then you will have to uh, use, um, probably you'll have to stop the, the application every time and, and restart it. But if you're look, watching this video as the second video, that you, it, this might not make any sense yet. By the time of the fourth video, your fourth or fifth video, you'll probably understand what I'm talking about here. So here are the, the slides. And then I added a slide uh, about installing uh, Perl on Linux. Now, normally, uh, and it's also uh, so I'll have to change the the the, uh, the, uh, the title because it's also for for Mac. So normally uh, on Linux you will have a version of Perl which is usually referred by the Perl community as the system Perl that comes with the system. And the Perl community in general usually doesn't <coughs> recommend using it for any application development. Um, because it's there for the system, you wouldn't want to install it in, in as anything, uh, definitely. And you wouldn't want to be dependent on the exact version of your current version of your Linux operating system. So, exact version of Perl. So, maybe you upgrade your Linux, uh, but you will want to stay with the same version of Perl for some reason. Uh, or you are in on some version of Linux, but you would like to uh, have a newer version of Perl, not what they provide. So that's the reason why you would want to install your own Perl. And there are a couple of ways to do that. One of them is to use the, the Perl Beer Brew uh, command. I'm going to show you. So there's this website. You can follow the instructions here. Perl Brew is primarily, I think it's primarily good for people who would like to have several versions of Perl maybe several ways configured them and they would like to switch between them quite often. Um, and that could be good. And uh, that's you can follow the instructions here uh, on this website. I'll, the links is on the, in the slides and you can do that. Okay, and install that. So that's one way to install Perl and then you can uh, switch between the versions. The other way is uh, to install basically manually. Um, it's, it, uh, it's a little more steps I think to do that uh, but th that's the way I installed it on my my computer so for for the Perl brew version you are actually using uh, the system Perl to install the rest of the pearls um, but not here so for that uh, I visit you, you would visit the cpan.org the central website of everything in Perl and in here what we are interested or one of the centrals whatever uh, in twin what we are interested in the Perl source click link and here you'll have instructions. It has been here like, I don't know, 20 years now. So it's just being updated all the time. So you have the instructions how to in install, uh, how to download in the source code of Perl and then uh, how to compile it. So let me just go over this quickly. You download it, let's say wget or with curl, you can download the, the file from here. So this is right now, as I'm, right, as I'm recording this video, this is the most recent, um, uh, production version of uh, of Perl. You can also see there's a new version 5.33.4, uh, which is, um, let me enlarge the fonts a little bit, uh, which is a development version, so you probably don't want to, that, to use that. 
Uh, once you downloaded it, you unzip it, restore, then you CD into the directory that you just created. And then, and that's the interesting part, you run inside the directory this dot slash configure, uh, minus DES, doesn't really matter, various uh, options you can give. And here is the critical part, is where you actually tell um, the configure uh, command is where to install Perl. Now this one, I wouldn't co co copy because this says, or well, it depends on you. This is not what I did, okay? This says that to install it in your home, home, direct, home directory slash local Perl. What I did is, uh, let me show you that my command line. So if I run now which Perl, it will say that it's in slash opt beer Perl bin Perl. But actually what, what I have, is that in the slash opt directory, I have a directory called Perl 530.1. So this is a, an older version of Perl, slightly older, a year old, or uh, so the previous version of, uh, previous stable version of Perl, and I installed it here. So I would put this pass, copy, let me copy, instead of this dollar home something. Of course, for version 5.32.0, I would update the number. And then uh, this configures the installation to, um, to compile and install later on Perl in that directory. Then I run make, so for this you will need uh, also the GCC compiler and maybe other stuff. Make test, that will run all the unit tests that come with Perl to verify that your compilation on your comp uh, computer works well. That's nice, these boosts can take quite a lot. And then you run make install, that will install Perl in the directory that you specified in this command. So if you're specifying something in your home, in, inside your home directory, where you as the regular user uh, has write permission, then this would also work uh, as it is. If on the other hand, you do what I did, so uh, uh, pro uh, giving it something like slash opt, slash opt, uh, is owned uh, by the root, the root user. So for this, you will have to use sudo uh, on this command. So you will have to write sudo and then make install in order to install it in the right direct, uh, directory. So once you did that, this, this, then what I do, okay, that's up, again up, up to you, is I created in slash, uh, so it's ls minus minus l in case you don't know what ll is here. So ls minus l um, is just an alias uh, in my uh, shell. So the slash opt Perl is actually a symbolic link to this 531. So anything else in my computer can refer to slash opt slash Perl. And then when I'm going to replace this with a newer version of Perl, they don't have to know about it. They will just, it will just work. Okay, so that's how I, I configure it. And then I'll have to set up uh, a couple of things. I have to uh, configure my uh, pass environment very well. So it will also include this directory, the slash opt perl slash bin directory. Okay, that's okay, that, whatever. So this directory has to be included in the pass environment variable. So in the dollar pass, okay, that you would do it in your bash rc file or the bash underscore profile file, uh, whatever you use or whatever shell you use. And with that, you'll have Perl. So now if, uh, let me go back there. Now if I write Perl minus V, it will tell me that this is the right version of Perl, uh, whatever I wanted to install. And then uh, the which Perl, as, as I showed you earlier, it will point you to the right version of Perl. Now that's about Perl, but still you have to install, uh, you need to know how to install now modules. For this, I recommend you install cpan minus, also known, known as cpan m. Now, when you visit the website, don't get uh, frightened because what you can see there is actually the source code only. So you won't see here a nice uh, website or whatever, is the source code of the uh, command that you have to run. So the way you do this, you download it with this curl and you can directly pipe it into Perl Okay, assuming that this Perl is already the one that um, you want, where you want to uh, install stuff. Um, you can also download it and then run it by yourself. It, it, it all depends on, on you. You can also go, instead of this, you can also go and fetch this from um, CPAN, from MetaCPAN. So you could go visit MetaCPAN pod and it's up CPAN minus 
actually I'll, I'll can put the link there uh, as well so you can download it also from here if the, you prefer that, that version and install then the, the module and then once you install the cpanm then you will have it uh, let me see where is it for me cpanm so for me it automatically installed in my home directory so home gabor here in linux well, this is my home directory in the Perl 5 uh, subdirectory. Maybe it asked me, I don't even remember anymore. But um, uh, that's the, the second thing. So now I can use cpanm. One more thing that's recommended is to install locallib, now already with cpanm. Uh, that will allow, make it easy, super easy uh, to install everything in uh, this directory. So now every module is going to be installed uh, in this directory. So for that, you will also have to configure again, uh, add something uh, to your uh, .bash profile in order to uh, make it work. I'll put the actual thing that you have to put there in the in the notes uh, of the course. Uh, but uh, when you run the command, they also tell you that okay, put this in your configuration file or execute this. Uh, so that's it. That's how you get um, cpanm. And then once you have cpanm, you just type in cpanm and dancer2 and it will go out and install dancer2. Okay. So for me also, okay. Apparently I don't have the most recent version of, CPA, of dancer2 on this computer. Uh, so it's now installing it. Uh, we won't have to wait for that. It's going to do it. If you're running the tests again, uh, as uh, they did it on Windows, it's going to be much faster actually here. But anyway, we don't wait for it. So that's it. If you need uh, Linux, then that's how you can uh, set it up and you can go on and continue with the rest of the course.